Let's use the Adobe Illustrator CC Polar Grid tool. The Polar Grid tool can be found hidden under the straight line in your toolbar. And if I hold down on the straight line tool, I can see the Polar Grid tool down at the very bottom. And I'll click this little thingy so I can see that menu all of the time. The Polar Grid, you just give it a click and then you drag and I've been playing around with this so you might see something differently but you should see something like this out of the box and we have those circles in the middle to add lines you uh, do your up arrow key and I'm holding the mouse down this entire time once you let go you have what you have but if I do my down arrow key, then I have less circles. If I want no circles at all, I can just keep going till they all disappear. For the straight lines going around the center of the object, if I do the left arrow key, I get fewer circles, and the right arrow key gives me more circles. Okay, so that's that's uh, notice this is stroke color dependent and I'm clicking my stroke color I've got my stroke panel up here I can increase the stroke whatever this is you're gonna see some weird stuff here in the middle and in, in a minute and I'm going to delete that if you kinda sorta know exactly what you want you can select the polar grid tool I here or here and then if I just click it'll ask me the width and the height that I want I'm gonna put in 400 points and I'll come down here and put in 400 points and it asks for the number of dividers uh, and the number of radial dividers uh, I'm just gonna put in like seven of these and four of those and you can skew either. So let's skew the radial dividers. We have seven of those. Let's make ten just for the heck of it. And here we go. I'll skew it. I'll skew it a lot. It will be distorted. So there you go. You can see that the lines start out divided a little bit and then further apart, further apart, then more, 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 more. Okay, so you'll have to do some math on that. And you have to remember if you do that to get back to where the default is or close to default, you need to click the tool, click to bring the menu back, and take your skew back to zero. And it may be easier just to type zero than to get it back the other way. I'll click OK. And now we're back to normal. Now with this tool, it's 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 well what what are you really looking for? Maybe you're only looking for like a a kind of a pie design so you get rid of the circles, or maybe you would like to keep the circles and get rid of the lines. And and when you're doing either one of those things, once you get rid of one or the other then you then you can really do some very creative things or you can just leave this as it is let me delete this okay so I'm going to make a grid and my goal here is to make uh, if you're dragging you should see something like this but I want to get rid of all of these lines and what I'd like to do is make all of these circles separate objects so that I can colorize each one the way that I want it to. Now, here's what you have to look out for. Let me delete this backspace. And the grid is selected right here. And if I click right here at the very bottom of this panel, uh, there's an option to fill the grid and to create compound paths from ellipses. Now, 
uh, by default, neither one of these boxes is check marked. So if you go in and you, you go in and play with these and see see how it goes, but to do what I'm about to do, make sure that you click and that these are not checked. So I'm going to click cancel for right now. I'm going to go back in, start drawing my grid. I've gotten rid of my circles and here we go. So I've got nothing there and I'm going to ungroup this thing. Object ungroup, object ungroup until I can't ungroup anymore. And now if I go in here and I select, let me deselect. Oh, I can't see what's here. Let's come in. Let's come in and give all of these guys a black stroke. Okay, now, so we can see what's going on. But if I click here, now I can select the fill color here, a different fill color here. And I'm just going from path to path to path changing fill color and of course I could always change the stroke color also these are all separate objects and should I and and they're all draggable I can move these wherever I want them to go should you want to do that I'm going to undo a couple of times or if I want to align them differently through the alignment panel do something like that uh, so, so this tool, there's a lot you can do with it, but it, it's all in your imagination. What do you want? Do you want circles and the lines or the lines and with, or the lines without circles? Let's get rid of that and let's go back in here and this, let's, let's see if we can play with some lines. I'm dragging, holding the mouse button down. I'm using the right arrow tool to get more lines I'm going to de decrease the number of circles that I have and let's give this I'm just going to apply some fill color that's going to do the whole thing I'm going to increase my stroke just so we can see better what's going on now uh, this thing works kind of funny if, if I take the white arrow tool and click a path, I can actually drag these uh, spokes or strokes around independently. And I can choose one of them and change each one's stroke color. Okay? But there's still one object. I mean, I could delete them, drag them around, delete them. It's kind of hard to rotate them unless you use the rotation tool, of course. But the thing is, similar to the rectangular grid tool, if you click on the outer circle, it's it selects everything associated with this object. And, of course, to make that stop happening, you can always go object, ungroup until you can't ungroup anymore and then then all of these are individual objects all the circles and the lines so with this tool it's uh what do you want to do and where's your imagination and where can you play